Hello, my name, as you've heard, is Delta Nickel. I work at Institut Curie, and I would like to present to you today the project Libra, which is more a report from the field from actually practically trying to establish gender equality in an institute here in France, in Paris. So, um, I don't know. Okay. So, um, just to introduce you to the project, um, Libra stands for Unifying Innov Innovative Efforts of European Research Centers to Achieve Gender Equality in Academia. It's a Horizon 2020 Support and Coordination Action. It has um, 10 partners, and they come from a research association um, called EU Live. These are 13 institutes all across Europe who've come together to um, exchange best practices, benchmark, and to find a common position on science policy, especially to be heard in Brussels. So um, 10 of these institutes are full partners, three are only associated partners, and we've joined forces with the gender experts, as Doge, they're from Italy, because all these institutes are life science institutes, and we definitely lack the experience of social sciences in this project. So the project is built on five pillars, um, recruitment without gender bias, support career development, improve work-life balance, collect gender data, and integrate sex and the sex and gender dimension in research. This does not apply to the gender balance in the lab. This really applies to the experimental setup of um, paying attention to the sex of the animals you experiment on, what kind, what cells you use. So this is a very wide field and um, I have to say in Europe we are only starting to really look at that. Um, countries like the US or Canada are far more ex uh, developed in this respect. So the background it has been has been mentioned before in all these talks a lot. We have the leaky, leaky pipeline phenomenon and leading to a lot of vertical segregation. I have the numbers I have are not totally up to date. They're from the She Figures report of the European Commission of 2012. There's a new one. The numbers haven't actually changed that much. So you can see 54% of PhD graduates are women, but only 13.7% of scientists in top research positions in natural sciences are female. Obviously, this depends a little bit on the field. Life sciences has numbers are a bit higher. Um, when you come to physics, the numbers are lower. Um, very interesting, only 8% of patent-holding inventors are women. So you see also there, there's a, a big lack of women. Um, we still have a lot of persistent gender stereotyping, identifying science with masculinity. And the research itself, like I've mentioned before, is often itself gender unaware, especially in life sciences where, where very often people just don't pay any attention to this at all. Um, yeah, this, um, there you see uh, the numbers you see there. I think it's quite difficult to see. This is the gender balance in these in EU life, in this uh, alliance of research institutes. And you can also see that when you come down to the higher positions, how, uh, in this case, uh, the women are blue. So you see how, how the numbers of women go down, and they're actually highest for support staff or staff scientists, often lower positions. So these are the figures at Institut Curie. I have to say that within EU Life, we do have a very good position. We have a fairly high number of women PIs, of around 35%, and head of units, around 30% of women. It's not that we have done so much to encourage that. I think it is very much down to historical reasons of being Institut Curie. And then if you, you know, and I think, I think you've probably all heard about this phenomenon, that if you have already a lot of women in high positions, you attract more. Yes. Because, because um, I, I think you just, I don't think that lots of people think about this consciously, but it's just a more welcoming environment for a woman and she will be more likely to take a job up in an institute with lots of women than one where she's all by herself. So what is the central instrument um, of Libra at Institut Curie? This is the gender equality plan because the project actually aimed to that every institute should have a gender equality plan. These are tailored gender equality plans so each institute could decide themselves what was part of it. And um, it's resting again on these five pillars that I've been mentioning before. So I'm not going to read out all the actions. You can find our uh, gender equality plan here. Um, I can, uh, if, if somebody, you, you can go to the website and find it. 
But you see, we have actions for recruitment, career development, work-life balance, management, and the sex and gender dimension in research. And I'm going to introduce you to a few activities that we have done. So, um, as, as, as um, Elisabeth has already said, um, I'm work package leader for career development. So, uh, Anselm de Curie has been focusing a lot for coming up with measures for this. So, um, we have designed um, the Libra Career Development Compass, which is a program for women researchers, for postdocs. I will talk about this a little bit later. Uh, in another work package, um, the outcome is the Libra Recruitment Handbook with guidelines of how to um, ensure unbiased recruiting. Um, this is a poster from a poster um, uh, campaign that we will actually start in November. So these are just um, posters that are meant to make people think. Um, in November also we will have unconscious bias workshops, um, one for the whole institute, one for supervisors. Um, we've had um, various events like Libra Career Days, Career Talks. We've had one very nice um, event which introduced women leaders building the future of biotech because um, this is often something that's not looked at. Not everybody at our institute who does uh, become, become a PhD will stay in academia, so lots of people go and work in biotech as well. And we've, and we've run uh, an unconscious bias test in all of the institutes of, of Libra. This is a test that was developed by Harvard, um, and um, you, could, you could find out if you were more likely to associate women with science or the arts um, and women with professional career or family. So these are just some, some examples of the things that we have done. And now I would like to come back to the Libra Career Development Compass. This was the heart of the uh, activities at Institut Curie. So it was a program for 20 postdoctoral researchers. Um, and this was meant to, uh, to, to encourage women to take up a career as an independent investigator, as a principal investigator. So we had an online collaboration group, a mentorship program that was um, mentioned before. So what we did was we um, created a pool of female PIs of the EU Life Institutes who were prepared to act as mentors. And then people could sign up for somebody they were interested in and we matched people. And so in the end, all the participants had a mentor from EU Life, but not from the home institute. We wanted that it should be um, from outside to have an input from somewhere else. Then we had a workshop on self-leadership, communication, self-confidence, workshop on strategic career planning uh, with a mock interview panel. So they were really hands-on and with, full of practical exercises. We had various talks by scientists about their career experience. Um, we had a, a career evening with female um, scientists talking about their careers to these ladies. So we tried to to um, combine lots of different elements. And I have to say that this was very, very successful. Um, the, the participants were very, very happy and what they liked the best was the networking among themselves and building this group that, that supports them. And they, they, they have created a Facebook group and they're now um, applying to funding from other sources because they would like to keep this group going and I think that's a very nice success. And then um, coming to management, what we realized when we had to do at the beginning, we had to, to do a kind of assessment, where does the institute stand in regard to gender equality? We realized that for lots of things we don't know because we cannot collect the data. The way our data collecting system was set up, it did not allow gender data. So what we have done, and this is not just because of it, but, but also because we thought we have to improve our, gender, our data collecting in general. Yes. We've created this collaborative tool, a, a, a new database, which is called Sherpa, and um, this will hopefully allow us, yeah. Sherpa, yeah. This will hopefully allow us to, to um, collect more gendered data. At the moment, what well, well, my real dream would be, and at the moment it's not still possible, is to really collect of how much funding each woman PI gets. How much funding do have the women scientists? Because this is something that doesn't get talked about a lot, of how much, you know, how is the budget distributed? What are the consequences of this? So um, we are in better mode and we hope to start this very soon. 
So what were the stepping stones in implementing these changes at the Institute? So um, it's always difficult to find enough women, even at an institute with a number of, quite, quite high number of women scientists, it's still when, when I was looking for people to sit on the mock panel interviews and so on, it's really, really difficult to involve the female PIs because they sit on so many committees already or have to do so many things already. So that was quite difficult. But for me, the hardest, the hardest is, and this is now a very French thing, but it is the setup of the French system. Because you have an institute, but in this institute you have lots and lots of different employers. So most of our PIs are not employed by Institut Curie, they're employed by CNRS or INSERM. So in order to make a real difference, I think what would be really necessary is that all these organizations work together. And we come up with, with um, plans that we can implement together. Because um, the way it is run, you, we have a, uh, obviously we have a, room, a human resources department, but the human resources department is not involved in the hiring of most of the people at the institute because they're hired individually by the units. So it's very, very difficult to, to actually really implement institutional changes. You can do <coughs> sort of individual things. And then another thing is that... that um, in France, we have lots and lots of committees, especially at a foundation like Curie, that are the decision-making bodies. And how they're made up is often not up to us. The, the, the ministry sends somebody, the CNRS sends somebody. And so when you look at, at the decision-making bodies, um, the more important it is, the few women you will find. <laughs> so if you look at the security and hygiene committee, there are lots of women. Yes. When it comes to making the real decisions, it yes. doesn't look that good anymore. Yes. So this is... Okay. And so, and then I would like, just like to come, uh, come to my last aspect. This refers more to the Libra project as a community of practice, the way we've experienced it within EU life. Um, it was built on four principles, community, learning, practice, and continuity, and the focus was on mutual exchange. So this, was, this was a very uh, positive experience, I think, for everybody. So th the, the goal was to achieving a cultural change at the individual institute, but also for the whole of the organization. And I think working together with other organizations on, on gender equality can be a very enriching process. So, like I said, it's a model for cultural change, and we've been aiming at gender inclusiveness, not just gender balance, so also looking at gender equity and obviously gender equality. Um, the Libra practice just focused on, well, institutional change, you see the different topics, gender inclusive evaluation, unbiased recruitment, work-life balances, and training. The, the whole project has a lot of training modules for various aspects. Um, because we feel that often enough people just don't know enough to be able to follow this. Yeah, and the, my last slide, the lessons we've learned from Libra, aim for gender inclusiveness, I've already said that. Um, working together with lots of institutes reinforce the sense of community and uh, built an identity as, 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 as EU life, but also for the, the, the gender units. The mutual exchange and learning was crucial. The collaborative activities added definitely insight, and as I said, with a, with a career development compass, that was very, very important. And working together with social sciences was a very enriching process as well, because um, you know you, we all tend to look at things a bit with a tunnel vision. Thank you.